Hi everyone, I thought I'd make this video today because I have been a bit quiet on YouTube, Instagram, all of those social media platforms recently. And I know that most of you know actually that I do work full time as a makeup artist. So often I've had these phases in the past where you just have so many shoots coming in and shoots that you really want to do, really exciting ones. And that's, I've had that kind of phase going on. Um, really iconic shoots, lots of them aren't out yet, but I do have the one that is out already is the US Vogue cover with Rihanna. And um, that was a great shoot to work on and all the images inside are really iconic and beautiful. So alongside all of that, um, I've also been working on a jewelry launch, um, a collection of jewelry. I've always been crazy about gemstones. I'm not a jeweler, obviously, I'm not a gemologist, but I've always been obsessed with them. As a child, I used to, draw little circles and shapes with wax crayons on white paper and then use a baby's like a doll's bottle with water in to put one drop and then it would create this what I would see were jewels and gemstones and in fact when I worked for Shiseido as creative director my first ever makeup collection was the gemstone collection and you know that I have certain rings that I wear all the time and I just love I just love them I just think um for me, it's like makeup. It's very much like makeup. So when I think about gemstones, I think about them in duos or trios or palettes of colors. And um, yeah, I've always been very drawn to that. So I've been thinking for a while that I wanted to do a sort of small collection really of jewelry, obviously starting with rings because I am more of a ring person than anything else. And I'm not someone that ever gets affected by trends, particularly in makeup or jewellery, neither really. I mean, I enjoy trends looking at them, but for me, I feel like I have a style or I like something. And um, if I like something, I don't care if it's in fashion or not. And I also buy jewellery in a way that I buy, like if I buy a ring, I buy a ring for life. You probably noticed that actually, <laughs> that I will wear it all the time. I maybe have a few that I'll change and interchange, but I'm not somebody that, I guess in the same way as with clothes and makeup and things that I would buy loads and loads and loads of stuff that comes and goes. I like things that I believe in and I really um, feel on me and um, there's something that I'll invest in. So I want to create a range of rings. I had noticed that there were lots of jewellery companies that were selling the Lisa Eldridge rings, which was flattering but also some of the rings weren't quite the quality that I would want for my own if my name was connected to something so as, as flattering as it was I also felt that um, I really if something's going to be mine it has to be me so I am launching my range tonight um, at Dover Street Market which is a great um, also on, on my on my site as well so on lisaeldridge.com my site's relaunching tonight and my ring shop is on there and you can see all of the rings that I've done for this first collection. So on to the actual jewellery and you know I don't do anything by halves. I am a total perfectionist which is another reason why I haven't been posting videos probably the last two months because I've been so busy with the jewellery and shooting and I didn't want to kind of squeeze something that was not thought through or just kind of rushed. Um, so yeah, so I've really, my attention to detail on this jewellery brand has been through the roof. So I'm working with various people to source the stones, one of them being William, who has sourced my previous stones for all my previous jewellery, including my engagement ring. Um, and I've known him for 20 years and he shares my um, desire to source stones in an ethical way. And we're also working with a gemologist in Switzerland who's been sourcing stones for 40 years. So really just because it's such a small business, I'm not in cahoots with a bit, I'm not doing a collab with a big jewelry brand. It's very much my thing. And every relationship along the supply chain is a personal relationship, a one-on-one -on -one relationship, which makes me feel very happy because um, I do want things to be done properly and done in the way that I'm happy with. So I'm wearing some of the stones. Most of them have already gone to the um, the shop where the launch is tonight, which is Dover Street Market. The rest are already boxed up for on lisaeldridge.com. So please have a look on the site and you can see all of the rings. So I'm wearing quite a few of them. Um, so you can see that they are different cuts. There are square shape, cushion cut and ovals. 
and lots of amazing colours. I've stacked a few here. Um, I've got some silver ones on this hand and some gold ones here. I'm obsessed with all of the colours because I'm, a, I'm obsessed with colour in general. So the stones have all been cut to my specification, so they've not been bought ready in this shape. Um, and the cut that I've gone for is an old cut, which is the same as my engagement ring. And actually, I had to look um, far and wide. In fact, William sourced my engagement ring for me because I wanted a new, I didn't want a vintage diamond, I wanted a new one, but I wanted it to have be cut in the old way. And to explain what an old cut is, if you think of a lot of modern stones or the modern way of, of um, cutting stones, diamonds and coloured gemstones, is to put as many facets in as possible, so really go in deep with all the cuts, which makes it very sparkly and, and, and more blingy. Um, I prefer the much more gentle way of cutting an old cut, which means there's just less interference in a way. It just feels more natural, more organic. I feel like I'm more in touch with the natural beauty of the stone. And um, it's just a cleaner, softer way, really, of, of cutting stone. So they've all got an old cut. Now, I needed to source really amazing quality stones because I wanted the stones to be wide and flat. So not deep stones, you know, sometimes stones sit quite high off the, the finger and they can be, um, I don't really like that style. I prefer them to be kind of, I like a lot of color, kind of a lot of width in the stone. So they are all super transparent and super clean. So you don't have any flaws in them. So you're able to see through and almost drink in the color and that's, what I love because for me gemstones they just it's just like makeup for me it's color it's immersion in color and it just makes me feel so so happy um, the colors themselves I just went for colors and stones that I personally love so we have um, lots of greens of course I love greens I have done a small amount of big emeralds like the one that I wear which are very expensive so I haven't done so many of those um, but I've done quite a few of the um, the peridot which I love it's a really oily yellowy green very delicious um, lots of pink tourmalines again which are almost like candy I love pairing them in fact with green I love pink and green so this really really beautiful violet amethyst which I love and then I found this stone which I hadn't really experienced before and it's a lavender quartz it's very lavendery reminding me of my cat Betty so I've actually called that one the Betty and the reason some of them do have names is because when I showed this praiser light one when I got my first set of samples which is a silver cushion cut praiser light very aqua light watery um, oh gosh Neal kind of green and I showed it to Kate Winston and she was like, oh my God, I love that ring, I love it. So I was like, it's like the Kate. And she's like, yes, it's the Kate. So this one is the Kate. Um, and then this beautiful blue topaz, very icy tone. That one only comes in silver because I think it works best with silver. And then some of them I don't have here, but this one's beautiful, which is the Smoky Quartz, very 70s, I think. Um, that one comes only in gold. Some of them come in silver and gold, and some only in silver or gold, depending on whether I felt the colour lent itself, you know, which, which metal it lent itself to. I've got lovely pale citrines, which I've put in silver because it just looks beautiful like that. And then the richer toned citrine, so pale ones and the more orangey tones. That's actually the Josephine, after Josephine Baker. Some of them are named after the muses, my makeup muses, some of the people in my book, particularly Elizabeth Taylor, which I'm obsessed with this gemstone called the Iolite, which looks very deep blue, but actually in certain lights it flashes really bright violet, so it reminds me of Elizabeth Taylor's eyes. And in some lights it becomes transparent, so it's kind of, it's a really interesting stone and I find it really, mysterious and um, so that's a beautiful stone. I've got a beautiful deep garnet, deep red garnet which I've named the Isabella. Um, this one is just an incredible, incredible colour, so beautiful. Um, the, to me they're like my babies, I just want it, I want to wear them all. I know I can't wear too many um, but I have been 
stacking them up a lot recently you've probably noticed in some of the videos as the samples were coming through um, they were just so delicious and I was popping them on my fingers everything else in terms of everything is handmade and painstakingly sourced just to give you an idea of the attention to detail I've gone to here and why I've kind of almost driven myself crazy is um, so the first is sourcing the stones having the stones cut having the setting made which has all been done in the UK in really small artisan handcrafted workshops so the mold for the actual ring shapes were, was done in Cornwall which is in the west country here the casting was done in Hereford it's been sent back to Cornwall to be polished then the setting was done in London by a guy that sets all of the top, top, top kind of high-end jewellery. Um, so real artisans involved and everything's had a personal relationship, a hands-on, handmade, it's a hands-on, handmade item. For the packaging, which you can imagine I was really, really into, I looked at my vintage jewellery collection and I was really drawn to this rouge, which is a very early 20th century. I think it's around about 1920, this rouge pot. It was actually American. And inside, if you've read my book, you've probably seen there's pictures of this inside. There's the most beautiful puff. It's actually been taken apart, and I'll explain why, which kills me that it's been taken apart. But I need to get someone to re rejoin it. And I just loved this whole vision of this pot and I thought that's what I want for my packaging so I scaled up the proportions of this and I made my boxes these are some of the boxes they're all quite different um, they're made with a vegan suede so there's no very very soft feels like incredibly soft suede but it is vegan suede so there's no animal um, skins in there that in itself has been really quite hard to source and particularly the colours I wanted and then to find somebody who could actually work with it to make these round boxes which are the scaled up version of the vintage rouge pot and then inside you have some of them have sort of pink interiors some of them the pink ones have red interiors which is a little bit like lips and some of the boxes have pink interiors and then there are a few kind of lavendery ones as well again the boxes in the end are being made by a real old company in re really old um, as in they've been making jewelry boxes for all the big jewelry houses for years and they're based in Norfolk so and again it's every single box is hand made my little logo is an le that i drew on the back of an envelope and then i changed the e into lips so it's le lisa eldridge but it's been and it's embossed into the into the lid so then on to the puffs because i really wanted these puffs to be look like the original 1920s puffs okay that sounds easy doesn't it but it's taken a year so here's the original so i thought okay we need to source from the 1920s, these little beads, these celluloid sequins, this fabric, which is vintage fabric, and then also the puff, which I, di I couldn't, I didn't want to use vintage because I wanted fresh, but I wanted it to be tea stained and made into a way that it looked more vintage. That has been, that's nearly killed me actually. So in the end, I found lots of vintage fabric from the 1920s, 30s and 40s, actually mainly lingerie. I'm going to show you some of my puffs. And again, they had to all be handmade. I had to find vintage celluloid sequins from the 1920s and 30s. I've been talking to people who collect vintage jewellery, people who collect vintage clothes. Yes, it's been a lot of conversations and then trying to find also somebody who could make them and actually hand make them. In the end, it was Jessie who works with me, her auntie who has made them all, each one by hand. And we've actually got a video of the process, which you can see here. She is, uh, she's been a saint to make all of these by hand using the vintage fabric and the vintage sequins and the vintage beads, which we sourced in the end to, for the top. 
and um, yes, so each box comes with a puff and you can see that the world is the colourful boxes, the beautiful um, puffs which you can use to polish your rings. So you get your little puff and you can polish, it also protects your ring, it sits on top and it has that connection to makeup which makes it feel authentically me. So I think I've gone into everything about these rings. Um, the prices are from about £390 and they just go up depending on the rarity of the stone, the size of the stone. At the top end there are some real one-off big emeralds and unusual blue tourmalines um, but the majority of them are 390 they go up sort of slowly from there. It's um, they're made with a lot of attention to detail. I'm thrilled with the, the outcome. Um, I hope that you will like them. And um, yes, that's where I've been. That's what I've been doing. That's not to say I'm not gonna be back on YouTube and making videos once my launch is over tonight. Um, and the press have seen it and everyone's seen it. And my baby, I've given birth to my baby. I will feel like I've kind of got my life back again. Obviously, I'm still going to be working on them, but um, I will be making more videos and um, posting more on Instagram and all the rest of it. But I just want to say that I love the fact that although I haven't been posting, you know, you're all still there for me and I really, really appreciate that. And I never, ever take anyone that watches my videos or subscribes to me on YouTube or indeed is subscribed to me or follows me on Instagram for granted I really appreciate that you are you know you stay interested and um, thank you so much bye